questions for reflection. Our first reading is taken from the Hebrew prophet Amos. Now Amos was a shepherd, not a member of any school of prophets, and he ministered during the 8th century BC. In this passage, he speaks for the Lord, telling Israel, Judah, and the nations of their transgressions. They see men as slaves. They trample on the weak. They live in sexual immorality with both father and son, using the same prostitute. They worship pagan gods. This prophet warns the people there are consequences for these sins. These transgressions are prevalent in our own time. Yes, in the church herself and among too many of her leaders, there are still consequences. We live in an age which seems to have forgotten the words of the Apostle Paul to the Romans, and I quote, the wages of sin is death. That's Romans 6, 32. The proper response is repentance, reparation, and returning to the Lord. That same verse from St. Paul assures us, and I quote, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. David the Psalmist is also a prophetic voice, and like Amos, his prophetic words were for Israel of old and the Israel of new, the church. And our Psalm is an example. I quote, remember this, you who never think of God, end quote. That's our refrain today. Then the Psalm goes on to detail the behavior of those who never think of God. We need to think of God every day, and if and when we do sin, repent, repair, and return. The great sacrament of confession is there, calling us to new freedom. Our gospel text is from the eighth chapter of St. Matthew, verses 18 to 22. In the preceding verses, Jesus has come down from the Mount of the Beatitudes and is demonstrating the signs of the kingdom. He has healed a leper. He's healed the Roman centurion's servant. He heals Peter's mother-in-law and others who were ill and had assembled to see him in Peter's house. And then he's approached by a scribe who says, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And another disciple who says he'll follow him after he buries his father. Jesus' words are clear and strong. Follow me and leave the dead to bury the dead. Are we following Jesus? Have we put our call to be his disciples first before all else? This is what he asks of us.